students, in this video, I'm going to talk a little more about uh, the culture of colonial North America. Um, one aspect of uh, this culture that's changing as we move into the 18th century is that we see the rise of the city. As the colonies become more established, as the population grows, as I talked about in the last video, it becomes a society that can support large cities. So the largest city during the 18th century is the city of Philadelphia, which has a population of about 30,000. And then you have other major cities, New York, Boston, uh, in, to, to the north, and then the city of uh, Charleston in, in South Carolina. So these are our centers of trade, uh, growing centers of education. So these are one, the creation of cities, the development of cities, one of the great achievements of American colonial society. Of course, the cities come with their challenges as well. Dangers of fire, dangers of disease, dangers of uh, violent crime, and certainty of life in a city. And so the development of learning and education that comes along with these uh, cities uh, we see the development of two conflicting forces, uh, really even three conflicting forces within colonial American culture, um, three conflicting approaches to society. The first is the Enlightenment, the rise of the Enlightenment in the 18th century. It's not a movement that I'm going to go into detail about here, but it's a movement that is focused on freedom from authority and the rejection of uh, authority figures, either political figures uh, of authority or religious figures of authority. And this manifests itself in the development of an approach to religion that's called deism. The idea that there is a God, a God who created the natural world and the laws of the natural world, but afterwards has very little interest in, um, in human beings or in the world itself. And human beings are kind of just left to discover these natural laws. The more the natural laws they discover, the better they become, the less evil there is in the world. Um, and so this is a, a rejection of traditional religious authority, a skepticism of the claims of Christianity, um, but still an acceptance of the idea that there is a God and that, there's, uh, and that you have an ordered laws of the universe. So this skepticism of the Enlightenment is a challenge to the religious nature of some of the early American colonies. Remember that the New England colonies in particular were founded as religious communities. And so in response to the Enlightenment, we see uh, what's known a religious phenomenon that's known as the Great Awakening. And we see traveling preachers who are traveling throughout the English colonies in North America, preaching repentance and a renewal of religion. And it's in large part a response to this growing skepticism that you see around the Enlightenment and in the eyes of these preachers who are typically uh, Methodists or perhaps Baptists, the established religions, the Puritanism of New England, the Anglicanism of the South, these religions have become kind of stayed, kind of corrupted, have made compromises in their earlier religious zeal. And so that's what's being awakened now. You have these new, more nonconformist religions that are encouraging a reawakening of religious zeal in the colonies. Uh, so you have both the Enlightenment, it's encouraging a certain skepticism. You have the Great Awakening that is encouraging a religious response to this challenge. And then you have the creation of the Ivy League universities by the established uh, religious churches, by the Anglicans, by the Presbyterians, um, and other, other established churches uh, as a response to the Great Awakening. So you have these three different competing cultural forces within colonial America. But the two most powerful, the two most influential, the Enlightenment and the Great Awakening, both of them are a rejection of the status quo. Both of them are a rejection of authority. And both of them are a promotion of independence, promoting individual families, setting their religious independence of established churches, promoting a certain religious skepticism, promoting a certain political skepticism that we see in the Enlightenment. 
And so this idea of independence is becoming a more and more important part of American culture as we move through the 18th century.